deck rabbit here again. Um, so we go through um, getting um, TensorFlow to work. For those that have been a little bit frustrated on trying to upgrade it or install it, and it never seems to work. That's what I found out is the uh, instructions are on installing it are it's relatively easy to misunderstand what is one is supposed to do. So I created my own custom instruction and uh, so we go through that um, one step at a time and hopefully we'll help other people that are stuck with not getting it to work and specifically when one wants to get to work the TensorFlow GPU edition. So let's go to the desktop. So anyway if you want, don't know what TensorFlow is it's a machine learning platform from Google and um, it's open source and very common and you can actually yeah, you can go to the website and read about it. Well, I'm going to focus on how to get it installed like all the different the, the stuff that's not documented uh, the order of things, how they need to be actually executed and the versions that one needs to use of different components because as I said the uh, the instructions on the website are they're not um, that super clear on exactly how things should be done but anyway yeah, we could start with this section updating the system so this is actually important that your Windows 10 is up to date and um, the first thing we'll do is we will do the Windows updates to bring the operating system up to date. So usually I just use the search bar and then I can put in Windows update and then you get directly to the update window. And here we see that we actually do have updates already pending even without checking for them. <laughs> so let's... Um, and there's uh, additional updates available, so what I'm going to do now is we will first execute this one. And you will of course have different uh, situations. You might come in here and it might say that everything's up to date. But anyway, we will uh, yep. we'll be back after that's completed. Okay, now it's asking me to um, restart the computer and I recommend actually even if you install updates where it doesn't suggest a reboot, I suggest that one should uh, reboot. So I'll be back after, after I reboot it. Okay. Back off. Yeah, up and running after the update, and then um, we should install this additional updates available. So just let that run also. And, uh, just pause it and pause the recording until this is done. <laughs> Already hit 100%, and now it went back to 0% and started from there again. <laughs> okay, I have to restart the computer again. Okay, now we're back, and um, it was an odd thing that the update, additional update, came back again. But then I said download and install, and just clicked on, and then it came to this. So it was something that it wasn't checking the, on the initial, after the initial reboot, it wasn't out of checking that it had already been installed. And anyway, we're here now. Then I recommend you click on checking for updates just once more. Nope, doesn't find anything more to install, so then we can conclude that the Windows updates are in place. And um, then the next thing to do is to look at the, um, and the one reason why the Windows updates are so important is we're going to go and update the, um, the uh, graphics card driver. And that has some dependency on the operating system, so if the operating system is not up to date, one of two scenarios can happen. You won't be able to install the absolute latest driver, or if, even if you install the latest driver, 
the operating system will block access to certain features because they don't exist in the operating system yet. So um, uh, I always recommend installing the um, NVIDIA GPU drivers through the GeForce Experience tool. And you can go download it from here. So that's what we'll do. We'll just do a quick check and see if it will find any so drivers. And then it says, that, okay, we have the latest one. But if you want to check, then you can just say check for updates. And then it says you have the latest one. Or I have the latest one. And if it shows you uh, a driver to download, then you should um, <coughs> do the Express install. So you have the option for uh, also custom install. There's not really much point. Okay, so now we will move into the domain of removing, which means that, um, and I'm going to take away the functioning TensorFlow installation I have, so I'm going to simulate like if you had installed an older version and you know with older tools and you want to update it to a new one or or let's say you have a completely crapped out installation and you want to actually try and restore the system to some kind of basic level of order so you can actually do the installation again. So now next is to go through this um, step by step for all that scenario. Okay. So anyway the next thing is to remove stuff. So when in this method what I'll do is we'll take away all the the stuff that um, TensorFlow needs as support in the structure. So we don't have any old versions hanging around. So what I usually do is that I um, you can use the search bar again. And we just search for add or remove programs. Bring that up. And um, in the search um, box, we first search for all instances of Python. So here we found um, Python versions and just to demonstrate, we'll take them all away. So you might find several versions, or you know, yeah. So it's actually not that good to have hanging around. So we'll take them all away. This will take no, no, quite fast. So that's that gone. And then the next thing to search for is um, NVIDIA CUDA to make sure we don't have any old versions hanging around. Here we see that it splatters quite a few of these things when you install it, so you just have to, you know, there is no other option than just to uninstall them individually. Some have uh, their interconnected dependencies, so they make um, stuff disappear. Or make sure we take away everything. Um, be less confusing. Should be everything. 
and uh, the next phase is to have a look at the environmental variables and make sure we um, throw away all the stuff that uh, is connected to either CUDA or uh, Python. Just search for environment and then environmental variables. to get rid of so we're looking for python so we have to look at this one separately yep there's a little path for CUDA Seemingly nothing for yeah, that's that one also take it away. And then we have to check um, in the system variables to see what we can find. like there's anything directly connected to and then variables oh they're all gone so oh, that's good and then clean out some remaining files so we have to look at um, the directory that contains that file search for it on the disk if you can't remember where you put it. But I created this tools CUDA structure. So what we can actually do to make the system clean in this case is we just take away the tools directory. And then we have to remove the um, uh, virtual environment or a directory and that is here so it's all this stuff so we actually need to take away the whole directory So if you don't remove the virtual direct virtual environment directory, the Python had if you ever created something with an older version or something, you're gonna have a complete DLL hell mess. And then we're gonna re reboot the system. So see ya. Okay. So anyway, now we're gonna do some installation. So I've cleaned everything out. So um, what's the most interesting thing is to know what Python version is needed for what TensorFlow version. And you need to do it in a safe way. So you can actually go to this side of this address. Oops, I'm not in the wrong window. And then my suggestion is to scroll down to the bottom of the page. Should be actually at the top. And then here you see we have the um, package location, which we don't really care about now. And then we have Windows. And then you can actually see, okay, you have a specific Python version 
and then a TensorFlow version connected to it. At least you get some idea that, okay, if you want to have Python 3.6 with GPU support, then you get um, this TensorFlow version. And um, this is the only way uh, you can find out what Python version. And, and as you see, 3.7 isn't support. So it's very easy to uh, misunderstand the instructions of all. And go ahead and get three point, the latest Python 3, I think it's 3.7.2 or something. And then nothing will work. So and if you want to download Python, then you uh, go here. And we take the 3.6.8 version because it's 3.6 Python you want to have and the 64-bit version of that. And I actually put it on the desktop here to make it a bit faster for us to start the installation. And then and then install for all users and then add Python 3.6 to Path. That's I also recommend that. makes it easier to use. Not easier if you have several versions of Python, but at least if you're only going to run one version of Python. <laughs> so, let that install. So, that seems to be okay. And then we need to actually test it. And um, pip is included in the Python installation, so what we should do is we should start up a command prompt. And we just <sighs> check the Python version first. And we check the pip version. And in the instructions of TensorFlow, they're doing this. They um always adding um oh that's my AVG security checking uh, Python scripts for viruses before they execute so it delays a bit. Uh, in the instructions of TensorFlow instructions always adding the three to the end of Python. And um that's um ah do the on the Linux side then you have a, you run the Python command with Python three is the command to use. But on Windows, it's, it's just Python. And they didn't update the instructions for that. But anyway, here we see that we have the uh, you know Python 3.6.8 installed, and we have pip available. And I did add the note here. That they, you know, it's not 3 at the end of the command if you're working on Windows. And then we want to install the Python virtual environment. And that you can actually do just by executing this command. Go into the same command prompt and then just um, okay. That's already satisfied. Ah, did I forget to clean away the the extra site packages. Maybe I should add that to my instruction. But this this is Python 3.6 specific, so I suppose if it's um, and it will check the version. So. so I actually don't think that'll be a problem. Yeah, so I forgot to uh, take away the um, all the site packages. So I think the uninstaller didn't remove the. Um, extra global site packages. Can actually add that to the instruction. Okay, added a additional section here. So remove any program files, not remove on install. And then a hint where to find it. So that should cover that. And then, um, let's see, where were we? Let's 
going to install the virtual environment. Found out I already had it, which is okay. And then we need to just um, confirm what version what we have. It should be 16.6.1. Yeah, that looks fine. Now we need to set up an initial virtual environment. So let's just use the virtual environment command. And, um, you know, put system site packages and um, on Python and the name of the virtual environment. So let that crunch for a while. So it takes the um, global site packages and puts them into the virtual one. To activate it, we'll use this command. So now we're in the virtual environment, and then we can upgrade pip in the virtual environment. That's just my bars scanner checking. Okay, because that was also. Yeah, because it took took it from the site package, and that was already up to date, so I didn't actually need to update. So, and then we can actually list what we have. Just to check what we have in the virtual arm. So we have pips, setup tools, virtual arm, and the wheel. And then, uh, now we should just get out of this environment, so we deactivate. And you can always um, go back in again by using this activate command. And then we just get out of the command prompt here. Exit. So that's Python uh, details taken care of. And the next will be to install the um, CUDA. CUDA stuff. Okay. okay, next thing is to install the CUDA toolkit. And uh, we, you know, we have the um, NVIDIA GPU hardware set up, and, and we've installed the latest drivers. And um, can now uh, use the uh, GeForce Experience software to update the drivers. So anyway, we can have um, a look at this page if you want to see the GPU setup install instructions. From TensorFlow. So here you can read their their version of running through the process. It's just that things are in a bit of you know, bad order. You know, can lead to problems. <laughs> Yes, exactly, that was what one needs to do, is that the most useful thing is that here you have the list of um, components to install, um, and then you can just click on this link to actually go get the, um, the drivers. And in this case you need to be very careful that you actually do take the correct version, because the, at the time of making this video they already had a 10.1 version, so very easy to miss that last letter, so don't, um, you know, stick with the version that's specified, um, you know, in the instructions, which I repeat here also, not warning you specific version, <laughs> that points here. And uh, the installation of CUDA will actually check your um, oops, it will check your system hardware for compatibility. So if you, have, if you don't have the, a capable graphics card or something else is wrong, then it will tell. And um, then you should get this uh, this package also C U D N D N N S D K. And then you need to join the NVIDIA developer program to get it, but it's not it doesn't cost anything. So just to, 
just to sign in. And if you can't find it on the site after you've signed up, then you can just sign in and use this link, and then you get directly to the correct package. Uh, yes, and then when you get the CUD and, and software, then make sure you um, get it for the correct CUDA version. Should actually stay here to actually install. <laughs> it's just like a rambling list here. It's always good to go through these things. I should make a video about every instruction that I can actually fine-tune it. Uh, okay, so anyway, we need to actually install the um, toolkit and that I have on the desk. Just downloaded it, so I have it on the desktop. And it will unzip the installation into a temporary location first before it starts. Yeah, let's see if it's worth waiting for. Fast forward a bit. So now it's starting the install, and here it will actually check your system and see if it can actually, if it's compatible with this um, with the CUDA environment. Just do the express install. And then this, uh, I don't have Visual, you don't need to have, and I don't have Visual Studio you know, of any kind installed so much. Uh, they just warn you that some of the features, which we don't actually need, won't work if you don't have Visual Studio. But uh, I don't really care about that. Well, one small cleanup issue. There's the Ansight tool, which you actually don't use when you're using TensorFlow. Right? So um, I have um, a newer version of it installed, and I actually found out that it's listed here if you search in absent features NVIDIA um, Ansight. So what I'll do is I'll add a instruction to uh, remove that also. So I just added uh, into this outer remove program, so you can search for NVIDIA inside and then just get rid of those. But it's actually not critical for the specific activity that we're doing. So we can just forget that for now. And then we say next. No, I don't want to launch anything, just close it. So now we have CUDA installed. 
And now we need to install the CUD and an SDK. And as I said, the resign in, and then you can use this direct link to go and get it. And it's actually a zip package. And you need to, yeah, you need to make sure you get it with the correct CUDA version. And um, there's a convention of having it located in um, C tools. So you can, there are ways to change it. Um, basically, I've kept that convention. So we actually can create a new folder. Tools. And then basically what you do is you unzip the installation package. And then you just go get the CUDA folder. And you put it in here. And then I've actually put it so that you can <laughs> do an idiot validation because mainly it's looking for this this specific DL. So then we can actually go and take the directory structure and put it in here. So and then we have the DL file. Now take into account that this DLL file doesn't tell you what CUDA version it's built for. So you, you really need to make sure you get the correct um, CUDNN package that is compiled against the specific CUDA version. And then there was one more software package in the list on, um, on here, which is this TensorRT, and you can just ignore that for now. actually the fun part so after all that work we can actually try and get tensorflow itself installed Oops, I got to, um, <laughs> we need to add the um, path entries for CUDA. So it's the same thing you can search for environment and then um, edit system environment variables. And yeah, the same as we did when we were removing things. So then we just need to add, add these path lines. That's comparatively easy. We just say edit on the user variables and path and edit and then we just say new put that in there and we take the next one copy that one and new and that one includes also Just we reboot since we've installed CUDA um, package and set new environmental variables. So I always think it's always good to um, reboot and then we will um, get into the final phase, which is to actually install TensorFlow. Okay, now we can um, continue with installing the actual TensorFlow GPU version. And then bring up the command prompt. And then we need to activate the virtual environment. So we just copy that. Get into the virtual environment. And now the trickiness is with the specific one is that the in the uh, instructions on TensorFlow they say to use this command, but then that can pick up any 
Oh, well, not any that's not very... You don't really know what version you're going to install. So what I usually do is I use the actual um, direct address to the specific package that I wanted to install. So that I know that I have the correct um, Python version and I have the correct CUDA version and then I have the correct um, yeah, TensorFold GPU version. So I'll take that. And then let it run. took forever. No, I must have had some hiccup in the connection to the server where the stuff was downloading. I mean the internet was working working just fine. But anyway, watched some YouTube videos and took a shower while it was downloading. But I can't see any errors here, so that's at least positive. And then we should um, test if it would work. Take this line here, which just is a bit of embedded code. And then we'll see if this actually works. Yeah, that looks just fine. <laughs> not much, <laughs> not much of a, um, a result when it comes back. But um, and also maybe I should actually. That's not the most interesting one. Actually, the most interesting one is here. That we can use. Oops, browser ended up in the wrong window. So we want the example from here. Uh, let's see, tutorial. No, oh, wait, that was where it was. It was down here. And we want to take for beginners. So you just copy paste this into a text file and make it into a .py file. And then you can actually... And I've already actually done that. Um, so You can call it whatever, but I just okay. simple name. And then we will see if it actually does something. Oh, this is this variant scale. Yeah, you get that. It's just a warning have some legacy stuff they should remove. Yeah, it seems to be calculating. And this is actually an interesting demo because we can put that up there. And then because we want to be able to see if the actual um, GPU is doing anything. So here, you know, the default will be here. So then you switch to the GPU, push it down here. Run it and see what happens. Yeah. See, memory usage goes up, processing goes up. It says 3D. Well, there. So you can actually see that there's some ac action on the um, on the graphics card. So it's actually using the graphics card to uh, run the stuff. <laughs> So I would say that we have a working TensorFlow environment, and we have actually proven that it runs on the um, on the GPU. And um, that would be. Let's see if I can find it. The hardware. To take.
this one here. And here we can see. See the RAM usage goes up. Oh, so there is indications that it actually makes the GPU do stuff. Temperature starting to creep up a bit. finished then you can see the RAM usage went to zero and went down again. So anyway, but anyway that's that's that. Uh, if you found this um, video interesting consider subscribing. Hit the bell if you want to be notified for more. Because now actually when I have a working TensorFlow environment I'm going to use this specific version and I'm going to try and add do the um, uh, models that I'm thinking of using, and I'm not going to run image recognition, and I'm not going to run speech recognition. So this will be a completely different scenario that I want to want to do, and I'll be making a couple of videos about that. Anyway, well, thanks for your patience. See you in the next one.